Hello, good afternoon everyone. I'm writer coach Tony and welcome back to my channel. I'm doing another book review this time. It's from Maureen Lee, one of my, one of my favorite writers. Now, most of my favorite writers are Irish women and Maureen Lee is also Irish. Um, her book is entitled, sorry, um, The Girl from Barefoot House. The Girl from Barefoot House by Maureen Lee. So, after I read Maureen Lee and another maybe Binchy books almost simultaneously, so the stories kind of overlap with each other, so maybe I heed which are the stories. But here, the protagonist is Josie Flynn, and she lived in Liverpool, and in the beginning of the book, she comes from the poor side of Liverpool, and um, yeah, her mother um, was a working girl, you know, working girl. And then she had to take Josie with her when she had to do her clients. But she puts Josie in another place. And the problem with that setup is some of these men are pigs, you know, so they take advantage of her. And the worst part of it all. <clears throat> was um, um, it put uh, Josie into, you know, a, a scary situation because she has to work, uh, because her mother has to work while she's there and she has to be hidden somewhere, you know. So anyway, unfortunately, it was held during World War II and um, there were bombings in the UK and uh, I'm not sure if Liverpool was included, but anyway, in the book, her mother dies. She lives, she lives, thankfully, Joseph Lynn, but her mother, beloved mother, dies because the bomb really fell on the comfort room where she was doing her thing, so she really died. And she had to live with her Aunt Ivy, which turned out to be kind of a monster who hated her mother and whose husband, Vince, sexually abused her so this is a part of the book i wanted i did not want to read anymore because i could not take stories about uh, children being being abused so yeah it was hard to read but anyway i plotted on and uh, thankfully as i read the story became more more upbeat no so um so even if her Aunt Ivy was horrid to her, she focused, Josie focused on her, on her goals, no? Sorry. Um, yikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then stable. Uh -huh. Okay, it moved. Move it, move it. I think more light. So anyway, um, her life changes when she meets um, Louisa Chalcott. So she works for this woman. She looked for, Josie was looking for a job and she worked for Louisa Chalcott, who was a, um, a poet. And then their personalities were the same, no? Surprisingly, their personalities were the same. So, Louisa and um, Louisa and Josie hit it off. Although Louisa, f f uh, Josie felt that her life was not going anywhere because she was just taking care of an old woman, and this old woman Louisa turned out to be, you know, not really super good. No, I mean she's she's okay. She takes care of of um josie but she you know she's not a nice person nice person in the end though um she shows how nice she really is to josie by allowing her to leave and then find her place in the world and um yeah so 
uh, as the story continues, Josie marries Jack Coltrane, who she meets in, I think, London. And then uh, she was she was in a bar, and then she meets, she sees him, and then she focuses on him. And then, through a strange twist of fate, their paths cross together, and they became, you know, they became husband and wife. But it was a very tragic relationship. Very, very tragic because they had one daughter. Um, I think her name was Laura. Laura, and then when Laura was growing up, the relationship between Josie and Jack was um, was not very good because Jack turned out to be a womanizer and. Um, unreliable as a dad so um you know probably the most shocking event in the book um should i tell this <laughs> i think we should he runs over laura you know, because um um he was driving and then the garage was open so when laura heard that her dad was coming she ran to the garage while jack was backing up and then she he hits Dora. In the book, it's not, it's not, it's just implied, no, but it was shocking when I read it. It's like, oh. and then it pauses, it goes to the funeral of that guy. So it's a bit shocking to read because um, I didn't expect Laura to die because um, yeah, she's just a kid in the book and she really loved her dad. She was so into her dad. And um, to be in an accident caused by her own father, I'm sure was shocking to many readers. So, so from there, let's see. Um, let's read. Let's see where this goes. A fire blazed in the black metal fireplace with its fancy tiled surround. The Tiffany lamp was on, casting jewel-colored shadows on the walls and ceiling of the small room. Dina lay face down on the mat, drawing. Josie held a Sunday paper on her knee. It was a gloomy December day, but cozy inside. She might put the decorations up later. It was only a week off Christmas. So, eventually, she has another baby. Um, I think the baby's also the kid of Jack. It was a, you know, belated gift. And that baby was Dina. And Dinah had a difficult childhood because she came as a baby. She was an unwanted baby. And she came kind of a replacement for Laura, which really sounds very unfair to her because she's not a replacement. She's another person. But that was how they treated her. Unfortunately, you know, this a-hole parents. So uh, in the beginning... Dina, you know, even as a kid, she felt she wasn't loved by her mom. So it's a difficult childhood for her. It's only when she grew up that she, when she had her own children that she realized that it was good to have a family because she had to have a husband and had to have kids. And then she realized that the family, uh, if they really help each other, could um, become a strong unit, you no? Know? And that was the happy part. You know, when Dina grew up, she was, um, she had a turnaround and realized how important her family is. Um, so let's go. So in the book, Josie still had many admirers, and one of them was Francie. Francie was her friend from a long, long time ago. And um, although she really likes him and they're quite um, compatible, she decided not to marry him because her heart really belongs to Jack. So uh, that's how the story is. Wait, wait, wait. What difference does it make for you, Jack? Why you have at least 200? Thank you. Sorry. So anyway, um, 
So France, he continues to woo her, but she's not really into him. She likes um, Jack, no? So let's move on. For a moment, Josie felt tempted to tell her friend that she wouldn't have a good opportunity to establish such a large dynasty if she hadn't given up Francie O'Leary on her behalf. So what happened was Francie married Lily. Um, so that's what happened. Her best friend, Lily, marries Francie. But the funny thing is, if you read earlier in the book, Francie and Lily were up to an item already, so... I was not very surprised why that happened. Josie looked at the, also Josie also becomes a publisher of a small um, publishing house called the Barefoot House. That's why it's a girl for the Barefoot House. So Josie looked at the cover, my favorite murder by Leslie O'Rourke, and it was a book, one of the books that really launched her publishing firm. So she became a very successful businesswoman in the book with Joseph Lynn. She became a big, uh, no, no, a publisher of crime novels for based in Liverpool. So she was very well respected. And one of the books she, she published was My Favorite Murderer by Leslie O'Rourke. So there. Next, Josie rang off and called a day's Julie Heddington who seemed less concerned with the money than the fact that well-known actors would be speaking her lines. Do you know who will be in it? Don't have been cast yet, she promised to let her know as soon as she heard. I hope it's Meryl Streep and Al Pacino. They'd be perfect. Josie asked Esther to send Julia a bouquet of roses and dictated a letter to William Fryers. Barefoot House still owned the rights to his earlier work. He replied by return of post a stiff condescending letter Conveying his willingness to be published in America to express his dismay at a small advance. You'd think he was doing us a favor, Joseph said disgustingly. So, um, the publishing house grew and grew, and then they were uh, not really forced, but they had to go to America. They had to branch out to America because um, that, that's what, that, that, uh, that had a bigger market as well. So, in the book, um, Joseph Lynn uh, includes America, you know, uh, ties up with another publishing firm to reach the Americans. So, next, oh, Lily dies. You know? um, she dies by childbirth, and this leaves Francie very well. Francis Leary very, very sad. And of course, Josie as well, because the kids are very important to her. Um, the kids of Lily were important to her. So, yon, yon, so, let's see. So, Dinah also continues with her life. She bought a house in Mosley Drive, a four-bedroom bungalow overlooking Sefton Park, not far from the Ferry Glen. It had belonged to a retired colonel who had called it The Last Post. Josie thought it a silly name and took the sign down. The house had a number, it didn't need a name, but over the years, circulars continued to arrive addressed to the occupier, The Last Post. The decoration inside was ultra-conventional, cream paint everywhere, anemic flowered paper. She had the walls stripped and painted dusky jewel colors. Deep rose pink, turquoise, amethyst, garnet, red, topaz, with curtains to match made from lustrous silks. Much of the furniture was, brought from a, was bought from a warehouse in London but imported from all over the world. So this was just to show that Josie became very rich. No? And uh, yeah, but she was still very in love with Jack. Mm. Because uh, what happened when they were younger, Jack had a strong persona that he he became the life of the party and that made Josie very happy. Because even as they aged, um, Jack still had that... Um, that joie de vivre, you know, that je ne sais quoi, 
which really sets him apart from other people. And so when they have parties, even in the house, Josie, who was such a simple person, Josie Flynn, the lead character, um, yeah, she she preferred being in the sidelines. She didn't really mind that she was in the sidelines. So one of the writers that, that Francie liked was Dottie Venables. No? She was a... So Dottie Venables came to stay having driven from London in her battered mini. She wore her leather jacket and jeans and she had brought a few bare necessities in a plastic bag. She said it's enough. You're very lucky, Dottie said. You've got a bloke I'd sell me soul for. A great improvement on the other one, the stuffed shirt, Ben. So Ben was still loving, was showing her love, his love for Josie, but yeah. Um, ben does something very bad to us in the book. Um, so there. So towards the end of the book, it's very funny because, um, you know, um, so Josie had two men to choose from, uh, Ben Kavanaugh and Francie Lee, but she didn't really like any of them. So she tells Dottie, Dottie was planning to go around America. She was, you know, an older woman uh, more than my age, but she was an older woman. But she wanted to travel the U.S. So what happened was, so I'll read the last part. Dottie said, see you back at the house, Josie. She took it for granted that Josie wouldn't want to lift in a decrepit mini with rusting doors and an engine that sounded a bit like its owner's rough voice. There's nothing left for me, Josie thought despairing. As she glanced from Ben to Francie, from Francie to Ben. Then from nowhere came a vision of leafy jungles, hot arid deserts, trains and buses to faraway places, strangers speaking languages she didn't understand. She caught her breath. Dottie was about to slam the door of the mini. Dottie, she called. Yes, Josie. Can I come with you? So with that great ending, um, it opens another chapter of fun for Josie Flynn. The, the girl from Barefoot House. So this girl in red is the illustration here and she becomes Joseph Lynn, the adult who loves life, you know, who wants to experience life. So that's one of the best lessons of the book, you no, know, from Maureen Lee. I strongly suggest you read it because it's a, the stories there are many, like any Maureen Lee novels, there are many um, characters. So you have to be careful, read them carefully. And then there's a sense of family in it. There's a sense of intimacy between the, the different characters, which I like very much. And it also talks about more about family, which is kind of the novel I want to read, you know, books about family. So I strongly suggest you read Maureen Lee's the Girl from Barefoot House. She has many other novels which you can read. Uh, she's an Irish writer. And I think the reason why I like Irish writers is, is like is because like Filipinos, they're also Catholic. And they have this, this structure in their brain which prevents them from, from doing something with their lives. You know? There's this guilt that they have to live with. And of course, there's so much drama in their lives, which is very common, even among Filipinos. So thank you very much for listening to my book review. Please subscribe to my channel, Writer Coach Tony. And please follow me on my Twitter, my Instagram, and my Facebook. All the details are there. Thank you very much. Take care.